join me in welcoming writer and executive producer John Favreau, director, writer, and executive producer Dave Filoni, the Mandalorian himself, Pedro Pascal, Carl Weathers, Gina Carano, Werner Herzog, and director Bryce Dallas Howard, director Rick Famuyiwa, director Deborah Chow, and composer Ludwig Gorenson. It's exciting for so many people to see at the same time, and it's exciting for us to be in front of an audience like this too, with a, a few other episodes. We have the first three here. So if you've seen the first one, we got two more, and uh, we hope you like it. Yes. For the cast down here, when did you guys realize how big of a deal this show was gonna be? At what point was it? I asked them, what do I have to audition for? <laughs> you know, this creature, this robot, what? <laughs> and and uh, I'm not really a voiceover actor, you know what I mean? I was like giving them a whole spiel and, and they looked confused and they said, you're the Mandalorian. And I was like, they're asking me to be a part of something that is a really big deal, to answer your question. <laughs> <laughs> beautifully done, beautifully done. Now, Dave, there are a lot of people here that know a heck of a lot about the Mandalorians and their culture, yes. But for, for someone who may not know, what is something that you think that people need to know going into this show, and where do the Mandalorians stand in a post-Return of the Jedi world? I think the beauty of this show, honestly, is that you, you don't really need to know anything uh, about Star Wars to enjoy it. If you know the Mandalorians are notoriously the greatest warriors in the galaxy and they'll fight you to prove it, <laughs> then that that'll go a long way and you'll seem smarter at the start. So we kind of pick up in this lawless land, but a lot of these characters seem to have these, these allegiance, these rules that they're kind of following. How true is that for your character? Well, I think my character, um, she goes a little bit rogue and she's a little bit of a loner. Um, and she finds herself, uh, I don't know, just on a planet and that's where I meet the Mandalorian. Um, I think she's passionate, uh, a, a bit of an adrenaline junkie, and what I love about her so much is uh, I, can, I can be so much stronger with her, and I believe in her, and I love, I love, absolutely love playing her. So thank you so much for writing her. Bryce. You've kind of been like Star Wars adjacent your entire life, you know, your, your dad worked with George Lucas and then directed Solo, so how cool does it feel to be in the director's chair, and does it kind of feel like a full circle moment? Yeah, I mean, it's it's goes without saying, it's kind of the ultimate privilege and honor to be a part of this, you know, storytelling legacy. And and when I was a kid, this was just sort of like part of the fabric of my childhood. Like George would send, Dave, you're gonna so know this, George would send like every Christmas, like Star Wars figurines, like every single Christmas to all the kids in my family, there were four kids. And so I just grew up with just like Lucasfilm merch everywhere and like these figurines and would play with them and and um, being immersed in that world. And I was five years old when when George and, and Kathy and, and my dad did Will together and so it was just it was just so exhilarating to get to kind of continue that experience of just playing with these characters and losing yourself in this extraordinary story for our directors back here, we're hearing a lot about the kind of collaborative environment that you guys got to work in. Can you talk a little bit about that and how you kind of were able to make your episode your your own? Yeah, it was a it was like Star Wars film camp. <laughs> it was really <laughs> pretty amazing. And and so when when John when I heard that John wanted to meet with me about this. I was like, have you seen Dope? <laughs> Do you know? <laughs> have you seen my movies? Are you sure? Um, <laughs> um, but what's, you know, but, uh, but I think that's a testament to John is that I think he was able to see uh, the different talent out there and said, I want to bring some of these voices into Star Wars. And, and my films were, were influenced by, by George in so many ways. Star Wars was the first film that I saw in the theater, uh, American Graffiti is, is what 
uh, what influenced the first film that I directed called The Wood, and it was about, it, it felt like this incredible full circle moment. And so to be on set was pretty great, and John created this incredible environment where he said, bring your voice, bring your talents, and then we all supported each other as we were, were making the film, and it was such a unique uh, creative filmmaking environment. I'm, I'm so proud to be a part of it, and, and thank you, John, for, for, for bringing us in and, uh, and doing the things you do, my friend. Deborah, anything to add to that wonderful sentiment? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think uh, everything Rick said, but um, what's interesting is usually as a director, you know, you don't get to interact with other directors very often. Um, you know, so I've done a lot of television, but, you know, you're sort of passing ships and you never get to actually kind of collaborate or work together. Um, so I think that was one of the things that was the most interesting and amazing on this show was that um, all of the directors really knew each other really well and we were all collaborating and sort of involved in each other's work. Um, and so we were sort of a team, but at the same time, everything, everybody, I think, had their own voice, which is amazing. That's great. We have to talk about the outstanding music in this show, Ludwig. Uh, so great. Like, somehow it gets stuck in my head, and it's so unique to Star Wars. Can you talk a little bit about your process and, and what inspired you for The Mandalorian? For me, like, John Williams' Star Wars music is I think the best film music ever written. Um, and so, you know, there is a little pressure come <laughs> a little bit. Um, and I think the only way that, that I that I could could do it was to try something completely different. And and Dave and, and John was always extremely supportive of that. We were talking about the family feeling and the, you know, they were just always um, you know, super supportive in trying new ideas. And, and we combine like all these organic instruments and we combine them with a the tech, uh, modern production. And then we also was very fortunate enough, David and John was very, for, uh, was very, uh, very supportive, also including um, and recording an orchestra here in town with some of the LA's best musicians and really m also incorporate the whole, make it feel organic as well and may really put the, the, the soul into the music. Mm -hmm. I would love Warner's insight into what the experience was like working yes. on this production. Yeah. It's John Favreau who got me into the mess. Let's face it. <laughs> and uh, when you invited me, I knew within less than 60 seconds this was going to be big because I saw uh, the universe, I saw costumes, I saw the round horizon. I saw um, the spacecraft, I saw an entire universe, and I knew this is really big. Secondly, when John uh, explained a little bit about the character, yes, it's a dark, dark sort of figure and shouldn't be trusted at all, I knew it was going to be easy. Oh. So, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and I enjoyed every moment of it. Carl, how about you? First day on set, Grief Karga. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, honestly, I wish I could say I remember the first day on set. It feels like, honestly, it feels like we've been there forever. I mean, it really does, because, because the work has been so, um, so consuming in a way, you know, from day to day. Uh, as Pedro said, you're on these amazing sets and there's so much to take in. And it's, it's, uh, it's kind of like a sensory overload sometimes because you're there and if you're in a vehicle, it's moving, it's actually moving. And if you don't look at the camera and the crew, you feel like you're moving. And if the technology for whatever reason stops, then you find yourself jolted because you're like, you're going to fall over. <laughs> but it's just because your senses have bought into it all. So, I mean, those are the things I remember more than anything. Thank you guys so much to this amazing cast and filmmakers. Give them a round of applause.